Okay, so there's kind of a rule here that I abide by, and that is um, form first and then detail. Okay, as put, that means we we handle these really large shapes first, and then afterwards we can uh, add detail to the large shapes. So let's say I want to kind of eliminate some of these. Well, I could take the flatten peaks brush, which is really nice, and I can flatten out some of this stuff. As long as I start on a flat surface and then drag out, flattens it right out. And what's really nice about this, you can make some really cool alien skin effects. There's no doubt about it. So you build up this huge contrast and then you just flatten out the peaks. Okay, also if you hold shift uh, with any other brush like draw F draw and you hold shift, it will smooth. Now you can set your smooth, let's say I go to smooth and set my strength up. That way if I'm on any other brush and hold smooth or shift, it will automatically smooth correlating to that strength, okay? All right, so I have this drop off brush and it's pretty neat in the fact that I can create a huge amount of change. So what I'm going to do is throw some forms in here and make sure they don't have a whole lot of pinching between them. And you can see why we concentrate on form first and not detail. Because if I do this, let's say in this area right here, you can see all of a sudden I get a lot of pinching going on, a lot of distortion. So I'm going to make sure that I fix those right away. And what's kind of cool about it is the fact that, you know, it, it does add a little bit of uh, differentiation between like peaks and valleys. And what I'm going to do is create some kind of terrain here just to show you uh, some things. And I will not announce the things I'm going to show you just yet. It's going to have to trust me. Okay, so I'm just kind of smoothing these out. Now I could start with a brand new plane and I would never have to worry about all this. But again, it makes some very interesting textures on this plane if I just take and flatten out peaks every once in a while. See, I could bring that right down to its knees. Very cool. There's also some things that I like to do is like, you know, you could pinch mountains together just a little bit. And this, this gives you uh, the ability to fade different ones. But you got to be careful because if you're, if you're building a terrain patch, uh, you don't want to touch the outside edge, so you know you only pinch in the center. Now let's see some other things I could show you. Okay, so I could inflate this, then hold shift, and it'll automatically fix a lot of those bumps. So I'm going to make one big, huge change on something just to prove a point. So in this case, I'm going to drag some stuff up. Okay. And let me drag it up very straight. Okay. 
There we go. And we'll flatten out the top of that one. And maybe carve it down. And you can see I'm constantly switching brushes, constantly. Sure, I'll use this drag rack. Okay, so now that I have some kind of form here, then I'll go in with things like a noise, which it looks like I need to make one now. So now I should have clouds over here. Good. I'm gonna take accumulated off. Now accumulated, I should have never had that on, but that's okay. That's probably why I was having such issues over here. Accumulated means it'll stack on top of itself and keep digging in. Uh, I like to make, when it comes to a surface change, like this form, I just wanna put some detail on the form itself. I don't use accumulated because I, I just wanna go over the form once and not have a whole bunch of pinching things going on. I do have to turn this down though. Okay, and I'll just add some detail in here. Whoa. Again, I wanna kinda save the outside edge. But I will make some harsh contrast here because I could flatten out the peaks and add more detail. That gives it that weathered look. Now you can imagine I could do this all day long and get some different effects. I could pull some textures from like grass and stuff by taking either pictures from the internet or taking uh, some shots of my own or whatever. But anything can become an alpha. Here's some noise. And hitting enter over here to make sure the noise fits in. You can see noise just goes like that. So if you wanted to make, let's say, a real fine type of texture on the outside edge without distorting the heck out of it, noise is good. Also, building up texture is good too. So you can go like this and turn it way down and just add a little bit of noise to everything and add so much more detail to things.
What I like to do is kind of blur my vision just a little bit when I do this. And that way I can start seeing the change here. But look at the distortion of polygons here, right in this area. It's such a huge change that the mesh doesn't even know what to do with this area and there's no detail here. So that I wanted to kind of make this huge form in here just to kind of show you that the type of resolution that you're looking at to produce something like that is huge. You're going to have to like subdivide it even one more time and can your system actually handle that? Also, it has a lot to do with your UVs. So in this case, if I back down on my preview, or my sculpt, oops, sorry, because that's right, I'm in sculpt mode. But if I knock down on my preview, when I generated the UVs for this thing, I generated them based upon this. Okay? So, what happens is, if I'm at 8, and I hit apply base, now hit tab, look what happens. So your base mesh is very important. Should it have had more resolution? Well, yeah, it should have had a lot more resolution to support that much change. And then I could have generated better UVs. So what happens if I generate UVs now? Let's hit U, unwrap, and let's look at your UVs. Again, I'll just split the area here. And you see the UVs are just a little bit different, okay? What about change? Let's look at that. Let's hop back into sculpt mode. Okay, let's go into that area. And see if it can hold any more detail. Just a little bit. Well, at least the noise is taking place there. Again, it's all in your base mesh. So if I added four edge loops in that area instead of three, it would have had enough to support something like this. But still, it's not going to ever have enough support for it because it's always based upon my beginning mesh. That's why the skull is so important, because the skull has, you know, we lay down good topology, and we put detail on the topology. Therefore, it will always generate a good normal map, because it has good topology with detail on the surface of the form. This is just a plane that I kind of sculpted with. So what we're going to look at is now how to generate a normal map uh, with this. And let's look at the change between the two of having good form versus just sculpting in the next video.